Dave, yeah. can we do this one first, Christ is Alive, like this yes. chin's mm -hmm. ring, and uh, then do that uh, weird one last? The weird one last, yes. Yeah.
morning, St. Augustine's. Good morning. All right, so please join us for Christ is Alive, 182. Augustine's. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O God, whose blessed Son made himself known to his disciples in the breaking of bread, open the eyes of our faith that we may behold him in all his redeeming work, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from Luke. Just then, a lawyer stood up to test Jesus. Teacher, he said, what must I do to inherit eternal life? He said to him, what is written in the law? What do you read there? He answered, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength and with all your mind and your neighbor as yourself. And he said to him, you have given the right answer, do this, and you will live. But wanting to justify himself, he asked Jesus, and who is my neighbor? Jesus replied, a man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho and fell into the hands of robbers who stripped him, beat him, and went away, leaving him half dead. Now by chance, a priest was going down that road, and when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. So likewise, a Levite, when he came to the place and saw him, Pass by on the other side. But a Samaritan, while traveling, came near him, and when he saw him, he was moved with pity. He went to him and bandaged his wounds, having poured oil and wine on them. Then he put him on his own animal, brought him to an inn, and took care of him. The next day he took out two denarii and gave them to the innkeeper and said, Take care of him, and when I come back, I will repay you whatever more you spend. Which of these three do you think was a neighbor to the man who fell into the hands of the robbers? He said, the one who showed him mercy. Jesus said to him, go and do likewise. The word of the Lord. Psalm 4. 
to the leader, answer me when I call, O God, of my right. You gave me room when I was in distress. Be gracious to me and hear my prayer. How long, you people, shall my honor suffer shame? How long will you love vain words and seek after lies? But know that the Lord has set apart the faithful for himself. The Lord hears when I call to him. When you are disturbed, do not sin. Ponder it on your beds and be silent. Offer right sacrifices and put your trust in the Lord. There are many who say, oh, that we might see some good. Let the light of the face shine upon us, O Lord. You have put gladness in my heart more than when there were grain and wine abound. I will both lie down and sleep in peace. For you alone, O Lord, make me lie down in safety. Hey, it's all part of the fun. <laughs> um, thanks for engaging us. Uh, we've got some friends here. We have George, and Jennifer, and Holly. These are all good friends of, of Al's, Al Gall. And um, we wanted to play something specially for him.
The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them, Peace be with you. As God the Father has sent me, so I am sending you. When he said this, he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands and put my finger in the mark of the nails and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, the disciples were again in the house, and Thomas said, was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. I am. I was thinking it sounded familiar. (laughs) Stay your vu. No. It was. I marked it for you exactly. You want to hear more, don't you? Just say the gospel. The gospel of the Lord. Just so you know, there was a yellow sticky note showing him which one to read. (laughs) But it is his birthday week, so he's probably still partying. (laughs) Oh my gosh, I'm so happy to be here. We're just basking in the glow of the beautiful eclipse. It was such a gift to be with this community. There were so many of us gathered on that hillside in the National Park, and we got to see the diamond ring in the full totality of the eclipse and all of us pledged that in August of 2026 we're going to Iceland together. (laughs) So if you want to be in on the Iceland trip, um, Susan says she's still going to organize it. (laughs) So I have loved the Jericho Road, the story of the Good Samaritan, the Jericho Road. I remember it first hitting me so hard um, reading it in um, A Testament of Hope when Martin Luther King described the Jericho Road. And one of the things he said in it was not only about the dangers of the road, but about how rightly so people are just worried about a lot of stuff when you're in a dangerous place. And the Levite and the priest asked a decent question, what will happen to me if I stop? But the Good Samaritan asked the better question. What will happen to him if I don't stop? In my life, I promise you, whenever I have read this gospel, and you guys know that when you read a gospel story, part of the goal is to find your place in that story, right? Where do I fit in this story? In my whole life, when I read the story of the Good Samaritan and Jericho Road, I was not confused. I knew I was the guy in the ditch in that I had depended on the mercy and grace of others throughout my life. The Jericho Road has played a big part of this community, forming us and informing us. I have this very clear memory of, I've been here a few years, so it was probably 25 years ago, this gospel story came up on a Sunday morning and I read it and I preached about being the guy in the ditch. Right after the service I got a call that my sister who had been teaching teachers in Cameroon about um, methods of um, occupational therapy for hand usage She had been in a horrible bus accident. Five people had been killed. It went off a bridge and landed in a ditch, and I needed to get on a plane and go to 
um, Switzerland and meet her there where she was being medvaced. And as the story came out, she talked about being in the ditch and the guy that pulled her out was a Coors bus driver from South Africa who came by and saw and saved her life. He pulled her out. Since then, I've been a huge Coors beer drinker in honor <laughs> of that good Samaritan. And we still talk about it to this day, about how dangerous that ditch can be and how scary it can be. And you know, forever Jericho Road has been a symbol of what is dangerous and injustice and scary in this world. It's only an 18-mile road. It's only an 18-mile strip of road. It goes between... Jerusalem and Jericho, and you descend a half a mile. You end up going to almost 2,000 feet below sea level in Jericho. And it's a windy, mountainous pass, and it's been known as the robber's road. And Jesus picks up on that theme about what it is that is dangerous and how it is that we can find our way down the Jericho road. So it is, Michael, you don't have to come up here, I got it. I felt his nerves. I feel you, Michael. You don't even have to get here. Can y'all hear me okay? Are y'all worried about it? No? Okay. So, I, I mean, like, I've, it's always been a symbol of what it is, and I think part of the reason I wanted to come to St. Augustine's is because I wanted other people to have a chance to get off the Jericho Road. I mean, Jericho Road can be institutional. Definitely Christian institutions can be Jericho Roads for many of us. The Jericho Road for so many women on the streets, you know, and knowing that I could come here and we could start homes that were safe places off the Jericho Road was a big part of why we are here. It's why we do most of the stuff that we do so people can find that respite who've been in the ditch. That's it. But it came up again when I was talking to Rasha, who is heading up the Bethlehem Project where we're making the chalices and patents in the West Bank, the women potters there. And she told me the story of her escape from Bethlehem to Jordan. And through tears, she talked about the fear of having to leave at midnight and go down the Jericho Road. And how it was completely dependent on the idea that you were going to find a good Samaritan along the way that would let you through to get out. So I've been thinking about how it is that you and I depend on those good Samaritans along our common experience of, for a lot of us, how we got here on our own Jericho roads. And just today, maybe for a minute, honoring a few of those good Samaritans, and I probably could talk about each one of you. And I'm very, very clear that the experience of the guy in the ditch is nothing but tears of gratitude for all the people who stopped. And I want to do that this morning. And I would like to start with Al Gall. Our great, great, whatever, Dobo, Do, Dobro, Dobro, that's the weirdest word, Dobro. He would show up for everything and play. He would come to weddings. When we first started, he was an original rambler when we first started getting together to try to play music in this place. He was always there for us. And several years ago, he had a house fire. And I don't know if you remember that Sunday, but Al showed up anyway. And so we decided to take up a love offering during communion and give it to Al to help him in his house fire and I'm telling you, there was this huge pile of cash, and I was like, I had no idea St. Augustine's was walking around flush like that. I would have had a very different approach to the offertory. People are like giving the fives and holding the twenties is what I learned that day. <laughs> but they pulled out their twenties, and it was this huge offering, and Al tried to thank people. And he stood right there and wept in gratitude for this congregation and how you helped him get out of his scariest time on the Jericho Road. 
God bless him. May his soul and the souls of all we love rest in peace. And I'd like to remember today Newell Anderson, who died yesterday morning at 4 a.m. I got to be at his house by 8 a.m. with his beloved family who was there, who were preparing his body with oil so he could be buried at Larkspur. In this flood of memories of how Newell was there from the very beginning of this community, when we had nothing, I mean, there was probably a half a dozen of us sitting in the chapel. He would cook every meal. He was the usher. He was the chalice bearer. He and Lynn got married during a set change when we also had to hold a theater to keep the St. Augustine's open. He's done a million things as this good Samaritan who, honestly, he has a heart that seems like it's joyful when it is helping. What a crazy, beautiful heart that is. And his son has taken up that mantle and run all the sound for us with grace and joy. And when I said the last prayers with him about a sheep of your own fold, may you be welcome into the arms of peace. It was like, God, no, lived that already. He's been in those arms. And today I want to lift up Scott, who... It is your birthday, and I'm so grateful that you have been a good Samaritan for so many of us on our Jericho Road, Scott. I believe your passion for peace does help form us and call us to be a better community. Your leadership of CCJ has forever changed how we understand to do ministry and the reach that we've been able to have. I'm glad that you call us to look up and to look in, and to look around. Thank you for your love, and thank you for all you do for all of us, and really for the walks at Radnor where you taught me safety on that Jericho Road and some of my own trappings and my journey as a priest. And I would be very remiss if I did not hold up one of the great good Samaritans of this community for the past 20 years, Susan. AKA the quitter. (laughs) Susan is the one that you want on Jericho Road with you, always. I have been on the road with her at midnight when we had a four o'clock a.m. plane to catch and she was still positive. I have been with her in times when we didn't know how we were gonna make something work and she can MacGyver it anything. She has this joy of community and wanting people to feel safe and loved. When we started deciding we were going to work with the women in Ukraine, Susan was the first call. She's the one you want down in that bunker to imagine the light with. She has led that effort along with amazing efforts to form our children, to form our community to form who we are to be better people. And I will miss her so much, I can't hardly stand it. But I think that the point of the Jericho Road for the guy in the ditch is that there were people along the way that bandaged his wounds, that helped him get through And I can imagine that he understood the real lesson, have we read the right gospel today, to understand and see the God, to have the scriptures unfold for us. That it begins with that gratitude on the Jericho Road when you've met a good Samaritan. 
that that's where we understand life is a gift and our morality is gratitude. That's where we really understand that community offers so much, but it also mainly can offer us respite from that Jericho Road. So for all of us today, let us celebrate the Samaritans in our life, both living and the saints among us. Al and Newell, Scott and Susan, and all the folks in this congregation. Let us remember with gratitude what mercy we have known, what we have been forgiven, the bandages that we have received and celebrate this Eucharistic feast in joy. And may we leave here then ready to extend a hand to our brother and sister that we see on that same road. Amen. We believe in God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, she is worshipped and glorified. She has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The prayers of the people. In the power of the resurrection, let us pray to the Lord, saying, Lord, where there is doubt, let us sow faith. For the whole earth, lovingly created and compassionately redeemed, that we may speak again of the glory and majesty of God. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, where there is doubt, let us sow faith. For all the nations and peoples of the earth, that all may be transformed by mercy to live together in hope. We especially pray for the places torn asunder by war. Strengthen them to be beacons of hope, reconciliation, and justice. Lord, where there is doubt, let us sow faith. For the Holy Church, that in all its diversity may witness the one Lord, one faith, one baptism. Lord, where there is doubt, let us sow faith. For all in high places of authority, for whom Christ was put to death and was raised, that they may be led to govern with equity and justice, bring life to those in the shadow of death, breaking down walls that divide. Lord, where there is doubt, let us sow faith. For all gathered in this assembly, that we, like Mary and Peter and John, may see the tomb empty and joyfully believing, walk in newness of life. May we hold in our hearts the witness that raises the gospel to life in our time. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, where there is doubt, let us sow faith. For all captives, prisoners, and those condemned to die, with whom the Holy One shares suffering and loneliness, that they may find strength, freedom, and forgiveness. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, where there is doubt, let us sow faith. For all who suffer in mind, body, or spirit, 
for whom Christ is risen with healing in his glorious wings, that they may be comforted. We pray for all who have commended themselves to us for healing. Lord, where there is doubt, let us sow faith. For all who have died and for all who grieve, that in Christ who triumphs over death, they may find light perpetual and blessed assurance. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, where there is doubt, let us sow faith. O oh God, whose mercies never end, we pray for all those who are grieving this day, for the family and friends of Al, Gal, and for Newell Anderson. We pray your blessings on all who, all of his family and all of us who are so grateful for his life. Be with the family and friends of George Strickland as they grieve his loss. And for all who are in need of healing in body, mind, or spirit, we pray for Hannah and Heather and Vaughn and Parrish and Griffin and Aiden and Tony. Be with Anne and Calvin and Jim and presiding Bishop Michael Curry. Watch over Curry and Porter, Rosemary, Theo, Dave, Mike, Jean Ann, Phil, John, Lorraine. Be with Sue and Charlotte and Elizabeth and Roy and Carl and Susie and Russell and baby Lucy. We pray for all those who are being born this day and for all who are dying. Remembering those in hospice care, including Judy's sister Janie, and be with Bill and little Hallie. And those living with cancer, remembering Christine and Ed and Peter and Evan and Jan and Paul. Be with Perry and Laura and Robin and CJ and Mac and Peter and Charmaine and Franny and Ben and Steve and Tyler and Maria and Karen and Nancy. Watch over Jacob as he works with refugees and Jack and the Peace Corps for all who are bringing the good news in difficult places. And all of those who are on our hearts this morning, hear our prayer. Rejoicing in the risen presence of our Lord, we commend all for whom we pray and ourselves to Christ, to whom we give laud and praise now and forever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Good morning and welcome. It is good to be together and to celebrate this Holy Eucharist. If you guys have some announcements, come forward. Good morning and welcome, welcome, welcome to this wonderful Sunday. I want to thank all of the college students who are here today and they served us well and gave us a wonderful service. Um, I'm on the advisory council and just want to let you know if you have any questions or about what we do here, you can ask us or there are other board members around. Just ask somebody who looks like they might know something. Um, but we welcome you and want you to know that when we do Eucharist this morning, everybody makes a semicircle and I talk with my hands. So everybody will line up in a semicircle. Then after everyone is served, the Ushers and shepherds will tell you when you can go back to your seat. Hey, y'all. Good morning. 
For those of you that don't know me, my name is Marley Moore, and I help our sweet Susan with hospitality on Sundays. Uh, but this Sunday is a little bit different because we are celebrating Susan. So over at the A-frame, we've set up a little reception for her. Uh, we have donuts and mimosas and juice and all sorts of fun things. So whether this is your first time here or your hundredth time here, we have about 300 donuts that need to be eaten. So follow the crowd over the A-frame because I'm not taking those home with me. So please come eat, enjoy, and celebrate Susan. Okay, real quick, reminder that we are having our Welcome Garden Blessing April 21st, 4 to 6 in the afternoon. Um, we'll be sharing more about it next week, but just hope you mark your calendars. And if you're on the fence about the CSA, we still need you. We still got room. It is good to be together. I just got some emails this morning that the greatest show ever will be back February 2025. We are looking for, this will be our 20th anniversary of CCJ, so we're looking for a group of 20 people to host this event. I have no idea what that means, but what it means is like help us plan this for February, for 2025 in February. If you're willing to serve on the host committee, being one of those 20 people, email Marcus, M-A-R-C-U-S, Humman, H-U-M-M-O-N, at gmail.com, and we will just start planning and making it the best, greatest show ever. Let us walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us and comfort us on their, our own Jericho roads. be so kind you forget to be clever never be so clever you forget to be kind and if I didn't know better I think you were talking to me now and if I didn't know better I think you were still around What I didn't stay dead What I didn't stay dead You're alive, you're alive in my head What I didn't stay dead What I didn't stay dead You're alive, so Alive. Never be so polite, you forget your power. But never wield such power, you forget to be polite. But if I didn't know better, I think you were listening to me now And if I didn't know better I think you were still around What I didn't say to What I didn't say to You're alive, you're alive I didn't stay dead, you're alive, so alive. The autumn chill that wakes me up, you loved the amber sky so much. Long limbs and frozen swims, you'd always go past where our feet could touch. And I complained the whole way there, the car ride back and up the stairs. I should have asked you questions, I should have asked you how to be. Asked you to write it down for me Should have kept every grocery store receipt Cause every scrap of you would be taken from me 
washed as you signed your name, Marjorie. All your closets of backlog dreams and how you left them all to me. What died didn't stay dead, what died didn't stay dead. You're alive, you're alive in my head. What died didn't stay dead, what died didn't stay dead. You're alive, so alive. And if I didn't know better, I think you were singing to me now. And if I didn't know better, I think you were still around. I know better, but I still feel you all around. The Lord be with you. Also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is truly right and good and joyful to give you thanks, all holy God, source of life and fountain of mercy. You have filled us and all creation with your blessing and fed us with your constant love. You have redeemed, uh, redeemed us in Jesus Christ and knit us into one body. Through your spirit, you replenish us and call us to the fullness of life. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we lift our voices with all creation as we say, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed are you, gracious God, creator of the universe and giver of life. You formed us in your own image and called us to dwell in your infinite love. You gave the world into our care that we might be your faithful stewards and show forth your bountiful grace. But we failed to honor your image in one another and in ourselves. We would not see your goodness in the world around us. And so we violated your creation and one another and rejected your love. Yet you never ceased to care for us and prepared the way of salvation for all people. Through Abraham and Sarah, you called us into covenant with you. You delivered us from slavery, sustained us in the wilderness, and raised up prophets to renew your promise of salvation. Then, in the fullness of time, you sent your eternal word, made mortal flesh in Jesus. Born into the human family and dwelling among us, he revealed your glory giving himself freely to death on the cross. He triumphed over evil, opening the way of freedom and life. On the night before he died for us, our Savior Jesus Christ took bread. When he had given thanks to you, he broke it, gave it to his friends and said, take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. As supper was ending, Jesus took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. 
Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Remembering his death and resurrection, we now present to you from your creation this bread and this wine. By your Holy Spirit, may they be for us the body and blood of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Grant that we who share these gifts may be filled with the Holy Spirit and live as Christ's body in the world. Bring us into the everlasting heritage of your daughters and sons, that with St. Augustine, Mary Magdalene, St. Francis, all your saints, past, present, and yet to come, we may praise your name forever. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, to, be, to you be the honor, glory, and praise forever and ever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us in the language of our choice, we are bold to pray. Padre nuestro, que estás en el cielo, santificado sea tu nombre. Venga tu reino, hágase tu voluntad, aquí en la tierra como en el cielo. Danos hoy nuestro pan de cada día. Perdona nuestras ofensas, como también nosotros perdonamos a los que nos ofenden. No nos dejes caer en tentación y líbranos del mal, porque tuyo es el reino. Tuyo es el poder y tuya es la gloria, ahora y por siempre. Amen. Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. The gifts of God for the people of God, take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
There's a land that is fairer than thee And by faith we can see it afar For the Father waits over the way To prepare us a dwelling place there
Moses stood on the Red Sea shore He spoke that word with a two by four Pharaoh's armies got drowned That Moses stood, Pharaoh's armies got around it. Oh, Mary, don't you weep. Oh, Mary, don't you weep no more. Oh, Mary, don't you weep no more. Pharaoh's armies got around it. Oh, us instruments of your peace. Where there is hatred, let us sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is discord, union. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. Where there is sadness, joy. Grant that we may not so much seek to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. For it is in giving that we receive, it is in pardoning that we are pardoned, and it is in dying that we are born to eternal life. Amen. The peace of God which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and in our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And the blessing of God, creator, redeemer, and sustainer, be with you and all those you love, serve, and challenge, this day and always. Amen.
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah.